I was living in a neighborhood and one night two guys I knew took me out for a coffee. They told me one of their friends had a car and they invited me along. This is a 17-year-old girl who is recounting her experience of being trafficked when she was just 16. I thought they were my friends, but it was just a lie, a trick. They started giving me alcohol and then drugs. I would stay with them in a house. Then more guys started appearing. And did you have any idea what was going on or was it a case that because they were giving you alcohol and drugs you didn't you would wake up maybe the next day or not know what had happened or what exactly they were doing? I woke up in the morning and I couldn't see myself this way. I said, I cannot be this person. I, I cannot believe it. I don't feel like myself. This is not possible. What kind of threats would they make towards you if you would leave or tell people what was happening? They told me things like, I will come to your house and I will kill you. They also told me they had recorded videos of me. They said, we will post them on the internet and ruin you. I was destroyed. Psychologically, physically, in every aspect. The number of trafficked people in the world is increasing. Figures from the United Nations estimate that there are around 40.3 million people trafficked in the world today. They're trafficked for labor, marriages, babies, organs and sex. Very few are detected and rescued, only around 1%. And it's in poorer countries like Albania in Southeast Europe that many girls and young women are tricked into leaving their homes after they meet a boy who promises them a better life abroad. They are wooed with presents and a better life, a job in Italy maybe, and I'll, let's get married and let's go together and let's make a better life. So this is a long-term project, so a boy would pretend to maybe be for a year. in love yes. with the girl, Absolutely. gain the trust of the family. Mm. Do you think she's a part of a ring of, of traffickers in Albania? Sister Imelda Poole is a religious sister. Her order of nuns, Mary Ward Loretto, work to rescue and rehabilitate victims of human trafficking. To hear that a human being has been so treated like a dog, like meat on the market, is just incredible in civilization today, you know, when we know better. But unfortunately, um, there's a cold heart around in the world. The problem of trafficking is rooted in poverty. And Sister Imelda is bringing me to visit the home of a young woman called Aurora, who lives with her grandmother and her niece in a small town. They have very little. She earns around 250 euros a month. And she recalls to me a time when strange men followed her sister outside of school. They followed her and took pictures of her. They wouldn't leave her alone. They suspect that they were traffickers, looking for their next victim. These stories have become all too familiar for Sister Imelda, who has been working in Albania with trafficked victims for 16 years. What are the, the methods that the traffickers have for keeping them in their hold? One of them is that they, are fri they become afraid of their trafficker because of the massive abuse and the threatening and blackmail that they will be found, that there is nowhere where they cannot be found. They beat them, they also drag them. It's very, very common for, especially somebody that's been trafficked for sex, that they will straight away rape them and drag them. So their kind of competence for good decision making 
is weakened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we work in the it's same. Very, so it's kind of peer to peer. Sister Imelda is having a meeting with representatives of other organizations that also work with trafficked victims. Some help them with housing, others education and so on. They are all closely linked and work together to care for the victims as best they can. If we start with a prayer, it helps us to be closer with uh, uh, the victims of human trafficking that we support. And Something that comes up in the meeting is one of the major obstacles to young women being reunited with their families after they've been trafficked. And that is the stigmas and shame that surround a trafficked girl. One of the organization leaders tells a story of a family she knows, where a man told his brother not to accept his daughter back into the home because she had been trafficked. Uh, brother will not talk to him, not only his brother, but the whole relatives will not talk to, this, to the father of this girl. That's why it's very difficult. To better understand the honour system in certain Albanian families, I've come back to a rural village and I'm sitting down with Anna Staki, who is the CEO of the Mary Ward Loreto Foundation. We have in these areas a very strong sense of honour and the honour it's usually um, related to the purity. She has to go virgin to, um, to the, her husband. In these families, um, or in these areas, honour it's, it's the more important thing, the most important thing. So they are poor, they might have nothing, but at least they have the honour. And she knows that. And it's very hard because that, that is used also for their continuous manipulation or coercion into exploitation because she doesn't have anywhere to go now. It's so sad, isn't it, that for most of these girls, they can't go back to their families, the ones they probably need the most. Yeah, it's, it's never an option. Traffickers can be broadly separated into three groups. There are the international gangs, large, powerful and well-connected. Then there are the local gangs working in the rural areas and low-income parts of the city. And over the course of the pandemic, more victims are now being sold online on the dark web. The sophistication of the traffickers is getting more intelligent. The gangs of traffickers are getting stronger. Because they get more money from human trafficking than drug trafficking, they would have been the leaders in the drug, tra drug trafficking and also um, weapon trafficking. And why is that? Because nowadays, with uh, more sophisticated detection equipment and processes, oh, yes. it's harder to traffic narcotics and mm. weaponry, but maybe easier to traffic human beings. Well, I think it's to do with greed and the money. You can sell a gun once and it's gone. But a human being, you sell over and over and over again, and you get a lot more money. And then there are the individual traffickers, who can even sometimes be family members, prostituting their very own children. Sister Melda has come across a number of these cases. But the woman that you met, is the justification for just the, the dire poverty? And yes, it is. It's, it's means to an end? Yes, it's a means to an end. It's like the mother selling the baby, you know, for sex trafficking, the child, little child. You know, how could a mother do that? But the excuse or the argument will be, I'm feeding four other children. This one will suffer, but I'm feeding four other children. It's a vicious cycle. Dire poverty and hunger can make moral lines become more blurred. And then the victims become numb to the pain. It's a kind of almost automatic pilot like a defense mechanism, but the trauma that that leads to when they disassociate leads to a much longer recovery period. In another part of the capital, Tirana, there is what's known as a social club for young women who have recently been rescued from trafficking. And today, there are around 10, roughly aged between 16 and 20 years old. One has a swollen black eye, but they're all smiling because for them, the main part of the nightmare is now over. 
Jamë pasha, jam shumë e lontur. Now I am married and I have a child. I would like to say to all the girls who might experience something similar, to have the courage to speak up. So a message to girls all over the world is that everything that has happened is in the past. The first time you experience abuse, report it. Actually, there's, there's always tears in, in um, a person's life that works in this, and I'm sorry. And many do make a life, you know. So it's a, it's, a, it's a journey of a year, two years, three years or more, depending on the trauma that the person's experienced. But you can live in hope for these young people. Mm. And for Sister Imelda and the others at Mary Ward Loretto, that hope is that someday they live in a world in which there's no longer a need for organizations like theirs. What is your dream? Your dream for the trafficked person? Oh, my, my dream for a trafficked person is that they find joy and peace in their heart. Whatever they lead to do in their lives, that they find that. And that they feel that they have a purpose in life and they have dignity and respect. My dream is to complete my studies and go on to have a job and be able to help myself and to put behind me everything in the past. This is my dream. A message to girls out there. Keep smiling and don't let anyone hold you back from your goals. In Albania, Colum Flynn, EWTN News in depth.